Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a movie review this week, and it's a 2002 sleeper hit romantic comedy called My Big Fat Greek Wedding. It was a surprise hit by many audiences when it first came out, and surprisingly it really did. Very memorable for, for what this movie really is, because during that time we've been getting so many romantic comedies about weddings and and so on and so forth yeah like but this one was a very rare one because this is mostly focusing on the, the Greek heritage um, dealing with you know one woman who's, who's struggling from midlife crisis and so on, until she finally gets happy again anyway this movie became so popular that it winds up being shown in many feeders across the country started out showing it as a limited release in some feeders until it finally get its wide release in August and well I didn't see this movie in feeders though I I had a chance to look at it when it was on DVD you know, when I first rented this and I couldn't say I was laughing as hard as I can it, it was hilarious funny beautiful romantic and it worked pretty well for a film like this this movie became so popular yeah, it, it's, it was been nominated for an Oscar for the writing and, and so forth they later spawned off a TV series that aired on CBS but sadly only lasted for seven episodes it had the original cast with the exception of John Corbett who went on to do a TV show that's also short-lived on FX called Lucky. So, while he almost had his chance to appear in one of the episodes of the series, the show got canceled after that, which that means he didn't get his chance. It's such a shame though, because I think he would have worked so well if he had played the character instead of some other actor playing his role. They also changed her name from Tula to Mia. So, yeah, that didn't work. Um, actually, I heard the show wasn't really that good as far as I'm concerned. It, it's been on DVD a long time ago, but um, I have yet to check out the series for myself. I mean, it, even if, uh, for those who actually loved it, this movie, I know I have. But I, I never saw the show when it aired, though, at the time, so I could see why. And I know that Nia was trying to follow up her comeback after that film and she winds up doing films like Connie and Carla and then later after all of that she winds up doing films like My Life in Ruins and I Hate Valentine's Day which also co-stars John Corbett. Yeah, it's sad to say that you know her career hasn't been quite the same since my big fat Greek wedding. Because I mean, even though she did wrote the screenplay for, for an underrated film with Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts called Larry Crown, which I really loved too, I, I was hoping that maybe someday she might make a comeback, you know, for, because she's also planning on doing a sequel to my Biff Factory wedding. Let's hope that the, the sequel will turn out quite well as it seems, because it would probably be really cool. The movie stars Nia Badarlos, yeah, once again. With John Corbett, yeah. Lenny Kazan, yeah, who's very, who's been in so many movies in, in her career, yeah. very popular too. Uh, Michael Constantine, you know, who's actually been best known for all of his work. Yeah, he's been in a lot of TV shows and movies, such as The Hustler, um, Finner, which he played a hundred-year-old gypsy. Yeah, remember that one? Also, um, a TV show called, where he played a principal named Seymour called you know, Room 222. Yeah. Which I know it's been on DVD too. Um, hopefully I'll get... I remember seeing that show when it was on TV now, a long time ago. Yeah. Also starring in the film is uh, Andrea Martin who did some voice acting with Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius and all his other stuff that she, she's been doing. She's also a comedian from the TV show Second City TV, you know, SCTV, you know, which had John Candy, Rick Moranis, Eugene Levy, 
Catherine O'Hara, you name it. Yeah. She's a great actress. Also did some voice acting, including uh, you know, Anastasia and, and many others. The Louis Madaller, Gia Parties, Ian Gomez, uh, Bruce Gray, Fiona Reed, Jane Eastwood, and of course Joey Fatone. Yeah, the boy. Yeah, one of the members of the boy band, In Sync, also known as Instinct. Yeah. Well, at least he wasn't in the movie that much. I mean. He is very tolerable in this film, so I can accept that. He had some funny scenes in the film, but at least he wasn't in the movie that long. When Runs Again by Nia Badarlos, and it's directed by Joe Zirik, a sitcom director who went on to do many TV shows that he directed that includes uh, Full House, Webster, yeah, Booze and Buddies, yeah, and also directed a movie with Bronson Bachot and John Larroquette called Second Sight. Yeah, an underrated uh, comedy. Yeah, that that was pretty funny. Anyway, let's get on with the film. The movie begins set in Chicago, Illinois. A Greek family known as the Polkalos, which means orange in Greek. Focus on a 30-year-old. Focus on a young 30-year-old Greek woman named Fatula, also short for Tula, Potokalos, who is played by Nia Badarlos, who is going through an early midlife crisis. She's the only woman in the family that has failed the entire task by expecting her to marry a Greek boy, make Greek babies, and feed everyone until the day she dies. So. In fact, Tula, all this time, Tula has been stuck working in the family business at a local Greek restaurant known as the Dancing Zorbas. So, all this time, she's been feeling very frumpy and cynical that one day she'll be able to get married by some, by some young, handsome, that someday she might be able to change her life for the better. But that is until one day at the restaurant she meets a young handsome school teacher named Ann Miller who is played by John Corbett. Yeah. But this all began with uh, an argument by her over patriotic father named Gus who is played by Michael Constantine who merely wants her daughter to get married and settle down rather than pursuing a career um, working at a computer class at a local college. By taking, so, you know, so prior to her mother Maria's concern, as well as her aunt Bola, she wants up taking the course, you know, creating her own beauty makeover, you know, getting contact lenses, changing her hair and style to make it look more, by improving her more, by making her more confident with her self esteem and improves her mood to make her look more like a happy, independent woman. She also offered her a job working at, at Bula's traveling agency so in order to make the life a whole lot better for her. And as everything turns out, you know, Tula finally sees the young handsome man at the restaurant, you know, Anne, <laughs> underneath his window. And then once they started making conversations with each other, they began dating week after week. Although, but that is until they found out that after they after she started lying to her family that she was taking poly classes. Yeah, because you know, since they've been going out with each other, including going to his apartment you know, to meet his family and all that, they begin to find out that that Anne isn't Greek. So that's where yeah, the whole thing became a big you know, misunderstanding. But after a while, after seeing each other all this time, 
Uh, they finally accepted their marriage together and decided to have one of the biggest weddings of all time by bringing the entire family, including his family, you know, mostly the two couple, which is now known as my Big Fat Week Wedding. <laughs> so they all, all got set up for the big day. You know, they had, you know, they, they started having their own, they started having bachelor parties and all this other stuff. He finally, Ian finally gets baptized you know, earlier in the picture and so on and so forth. So everything turns out good for the better for both Tula and Ian. And I really love this movie a lot. This, this is definitely one of the most funniest films that I've ever seen when it comes to romantic comedies. It's also very beautiful to look at. And you could probably watch this movie over and over, you know, no matter how many years it has taken. It's it's been 12 years since this film came out, and and they had released a Blu-ray release, of, and they already released a, a Blu-ray release by HBO, which has some special features, including the featurettes and deleted scenes, which is not on the DVD version that I have. It's sad to say because you know, I I wish you know. I wish this DVD did have tons of extras. But someday I'll, I'll definitely buy the Blu-ray release of the film. But anyway, th this was, you know, this was very well written, very well made, and, and I could see why it was so popular that I just really, you know, can't help but love this movie. Yeah, and it had a great cast, too. Um, yeah, I know Joey Fatone's in the movie. Uh, well, at least he had some funny moments, and he was tolerable. But I, I never cared about him, so what can you say? But I thought Nia Badarlios was, was very good in this movie, and I could see why she's been going through all this time, you know, dealing with this. You know, dealing with her life, and she wanted to be able to meet the, the perfect husband that she really wanted. So that way she doesn't end up being so lonely and, and depressed all this time yeah so I just I understand how she feels yeah because everybody wants to be happy you know instead of feeling blue because yeah, I know her family had to deal with a lot of stuff going around <laughs> yeah and and it's also the fact that this movie is set in a Greek heritage so it worked pretty well yeah since this is a movie about inner since it focused on the inner relationship couples and all this other stuff that happens you know, during the days. It's just amazing. Um, Lenny Kazan you know, couldn't be any any better in this movie. She, she was amazing as well as uh, Michael Constantine. Had a lot of great memorable quotes in the movie. In fact, there was one memorable quote that I really loved where they talk about how her father, Gus, was being more stubborn than ever before. She actually responds to her mother, Maria, saying, Ah, ah, the man is the head of the house. And, and Maria says, Let me tell you something, Tula. The man is the head, but the woman is the neck. And she can turn the head any way she wants. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. And another funny scene in the movie was when... <laughs> When they're trying to get Anne to say something in Greek, you know, just to please them, and yeah, they end up <laughs> he ends up getting it wrong, yeah, from from the two brothers. He ends up saying "nice boobs" <laughs> to to Maria, and then yeah, and they slap him. And then and the other part was when he actually said, <laughs> "Hey, everybody," which he said in Greek, "I have three testicles." I know, some translation. <laughs> it, it, it's, this movie is just so hilarious and so funny. You know, even the scenes with, with their mother, you know, going around, you know, you know, being angry and thinking that, <laughs> that, she, that she's in the country after all this time. Yeah. I mean, you just can't help but love this movie. I would watch this movie anytime, you know, if, you know, whenever you set the mood straight, 
I mean, if you if you love you know romantic comedies, especially movies about the wedding and all that, this is definitely the movie for you, and I totally recommend this for everybody. It's also one of the best movies of 2002, also best independent film of all time as well. But anyway. I give my Big Fat Greek Wedding a solid 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.